Welcome everybody to episode 5 in your C++ tutorial series. In this video we're going to be talking about characters and functions. So this is specifically going to be talking about when we take a response from the user and that response is yes or no and we take that in as Y or N. What if we wanted to allow them to actually type out yes or no? And we wanted them to be able to use an uppercase Y or a lowercase Y if they just type out the single character. You can allow for multiple variations and create a more user-friendly experience, but you're going to need some familiarity with functions to alter our data and some experience with working with strings versus individual characters. So we talked about this a little bit in the previous video, and this all has to do with double quotes versus single quotes. Today's video was made possible with the support of Embarcadero's C++ Builder, the IDE of choice for C++ development, and the IDE we've been using for this series. If you want to follow along with this series exactly, then follow the link down below. Thank you, and let's get back to the video. So we are currently allowing the user to type Y or N, and this is being stored as a string. And this is very important to understand because C++ is statically typed. By static, I mean the type for a variable is defined at compile time. We hard code what type it is and it's going to remain a string for the entirety of its life. So when we tried to use a single quote down here and said, hey, we're looking for the character Y, this was complaining because it can't compare a string to a character. So if you wanted to use just a character, you could say C-H-A-R, which is another type inside of C++. Now that error goes away and this code should work the way you would expect. Basically the same thing, we didn't change any functionality. Do you want to play a game? Yes. You enter Y, let's play a game then. We just changed the type to show that you can do that as well. So characters are just a single character, anything on your keyboard, and it's surrounded by quotes. Now, we talked about the backslash n. This is also a character. So even though it takes two typing, uh, two keystrokes to type it out, it's still just a single character, and it's interpreted as a new line. The thing is, it's kind of difficult to type out a new line. So how do you represent that? That's where the backslash comes in. We're basically saying, hey, we want to interpret this character in some other way. In this situation, it's as a new line. There's a few other escape characters that you can learn about if you want. But that's not what we're going to be talking about in this video, so let's go ahead and undo that to a Y. Now, what happens if we take a string and we just wanted to compare the first character. Let's say they typed out yes, and I'm going to use double slashes here. This is how you make a comment. So this is going to be ignored by the compiler. It doesn't actually change any of the functionality. How do we basically say, hey, let's take a look at that first character and see if it is Y. You can do that with square brackets and a zero. So the square bracket zero is how you say grab that first character. Yes, it's weird that it's a zero and not a one, but arrays and strings are all indexed starting with zero in code. So this is index zero, the E is index one, and S is index two. So let's go ahead and try this. In this situation, we have a string, but when we use the indexing, this returns a character. So response of zero is of type char, not of type string. So that's why we're not going to get any complaining from the compiler. And it works as expected, so if we say yes, it says you entered yes, let's play a game then. And if we run this again, and we say y without the yes, it still works. Cool, so now we've introduced some variety, made the code a little bit more interactive. The next challenge is what if we wanted to type in either a lowercase or an uppercase Y? So we say Y with a capital, and you can see it's not smart enough to realize that this is the same concept and that the game should be played. To fix this, we can use a function. So we've defined a function here, this main function, but defining a function and using a function 
are two different things. So there are already some defined functions created that we can use in our code. So if we want to use a function, what we do is we say the function's name and pass whatever data we want to give it inside of parentheses. So it's going to look like this. Right before response, we're going to say to lower and then put response inside of parentheses. So running this now, if we type in a capital Y, it's going to take the capital Y as input, lowercase it, and then compare the lowercase version to the lowercase Y. This data here is known as the argument. So now we have a lot of flexibility in our code. We can type yes with a capital Y. So you could say yes like this, that works. We could say anything that starts with the Y, even if it's Y no, and it works. So, you know, maybe it's not perfect, but it depends on what you want to do. If this is how you want it to work, great. If you want it to work a different way, even better. Go ahead and code it the way you want it to work. That's the cool thing about coding. You can make it do whatever you want. In the next video, I want to talk about an alternative way of getting a character from the user. Stay tuned and be sure to subscribe.